Welcome to part 3 of our Taking Care tutorial series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at radio buttons and check buttons. Again, they're a fairly standard GUI element often seen in many forums and GUIs. So before we begin actually coding the radio buttons and check buttons, what is the difference between them? Right, so radio buttons, a group of radio buttons, can only have one selected value, meaning if you're presented with three radio buttons. You can only select one of them. The but if you're presented with three uh, check buttons, you can pick one, two, or three, or even zero. So basically, radio buttons have a unique one value, and check buttons allow you to pick one or more. Right, so let's begin. Radio, we'll start off indirectly with radio buttons. Okay, one unique uh, aspect to the radio buttons is that it's going to require a variable in which to store its value. Uh, basically, each radio button is assigned a value. And uh, we need a variable to store this value. And we can't use a, a normal variable. We have to use what we call a variable class. It's not as complicated as, as it sounds. It's just a simple, let's call it var1 and int var. Actually, tk dot int var. There, that's it. That's our variable class created, and we can now store a value into this. Right. So let's st actually start creating the radio button now. Let's call it self dot radio. Again, it's just purely a naming convention. Tk dot radio button, and like we've been doing before, self dot frame. And here's the unique part. The new parameter here called variable will assign it var1. And another thing, we have to actually give this a value, a value of one. The value of radio buttons should obviously be unique because we'll be using this value to differentiate between the two of them. All right, sorry. Uh, place x is equal to, let's go with 30. And y is equal to 30 as well, right? And let's quickly paste, make a second one, and give it a value of 2. And let's also place this the same x value, but lower on the y. Okay, so let's compare these two quickly. The only differences between the two of them are the value here. Everything else is different, uh, of course, except the placement. And, uh, but the key factor I want you to keep in mind, for especially later on, that they share the same they share the same variable. Okay, it means that there's one common variable with, between them which can only hold one value at a time. Right. Let's quickly run this code actually. And, well, okay, it turns out we forgot to add the text parameter. We'll call this one option one, okay? Uh, let's quickly add this right here, option two. There you go, that looks a lot better. It's there. Okay. Now it's time to actually retrieve the values. You need, to, you need to know which option did the user select, right? So let's get right into that. But wait, let's create a button for this actually. Self dot button. Actually, there are actually two ways to get this done. One through the use of a button, and the second is a feature I'll be showing you in a minute. self.frame and we'll call this submit as well and command again command is, uh, stores a function name we haven't created this function yet so let's do that submit self now he, here I, I mentioned the get function in the previous video we need to use that once again to retrieve the value from this variable, right? Uh, 
let's put this below. Ah, uh, right, I always mess this up. Self dot submit. Here we go. And yeah. Okay, I forgot to write self dot here as well. So basically, we can't, it's, writing it without self makes it just, you know, accessible within the, this function. So you gotta include self with pretty much anything you want to access in other functions. And that's not what, oh, right. Uh, you gotta be uniform with everything you do. And here we go. There. Option one, option two. One is basically used to identify it as radio button number one, and two is used to identify it as radio button number two. And obviously, you can tell which one it was by just comparing uh, it and finding out. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. If var1.get is equal to one, print option one was selected. Else, LF, var1.get equal to print option two was selected. And let's run this. Okay. Again, it's off. There you go. Okay, now there's one more thing I want to show here. Let's forego the use of this button. Now, I think it can be personally a little irritating if the user has to click a button, or maybe you want to retrieve the input he entered before he even presses the button. So we have this other feature here called Actually, it's the same thing as the button, really. But the, you use, instead of using the command parameter in the button, you use it in the radio button instead. So instead of putting it right there, the command in the button, you simply switch it over here. Now let's run this. And of course, it's up after this. All right. There you go, see? A simple click will basically activate it. You know, the same way you click a button and it ran the function. So over here, you just kind of click it and it'll basically automatically call this function. It's pretty useful for, like, if you want to change something upon the user selecting a value before he actually submits it. So yeah, it's actually a pretty useful feature. And that's about it. For this video make sure to subscribe if you want to see more because we'll be continuing this series covering all kinds of widgets and all kinds of configurations layouts so stick around